What's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle Podcast. I am your host, Brad Valdez. I am Kevin Watson. And man, we are here at the OC, man, Odom County. Uh, it's been phenomenal. You guys are, are knocked it out the park, coach. That's a great to T- Tough act to follow. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> so, so listen, uh, what we're going to do is just go ahead and, and introduce, introduce yourself. Uh, uh, yeah, just introduce yourself, coach. Yeah, so, uh, you know, my name's Sean Little. I, I'm the head football coach here at Oldham County High School. Um, came here from Ballard. I was at Ballard with uh, Coach Morton there for two seasons. Um, you know, the last one we made to the semi-state, and it was a uh, last uh, six-second thing. That was uh, rough on us all, but, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a great experience. And then, um, you know, before I came down to uh, Louisville, I was in Indianapolis at uh, Franklin Community High School, just south of Indy, about 20 minutes south of Indy. Uh, and that's kind of where I started my career and coached there for about eight seasons. Um, working my way up through the ranks, I was the JV coach, freshman coach, uh, you know, coached every position known to man over there. And uh, um, kind of when we got a new head coach there, I he asked me to move over to the O-line, and that's kind of where I found my passion and my love uh, for coaching O-line. And that's kind of what I took over to Ballard when I came down here with the O-line. And then Coach Morton uh, and me talked, and, and that's when I kind of – worked my way into the offensive coordinator role at Ballard for those two years. And so it kind of, everything worked out nicely for me really. Um, and so it's been, it's been a fun ride so far. Love it. Those are some great teams. Yeah. Ballard had some, they had a run there with some great teams. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were blessed with some mm-hmm. tremendous players, um, guys that have been in the program for a long time. And, uh, you know, journey white, who, mm-hmm. uh, finished this season at Ballard and is moving on to play in college and, you know, we moved him to running back that last year I was at Ballard, and he just Good choice. took off, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was just – it was fun. It was fun with those guys. We had a we had a lot of fun, and so a great staff over there. Um, you know, and Coach Morton's moved on now, but, you know, me and him still talk, you know, weekly at least. And uh, he's actually – I'm going to try to get him out here during spring ball and check us out a little bit, give me a few pointers. Love it, man. And, and you know, let's talk about your, your mentors, man. Go ahead and, and shout them out. Uh, yeah, so – I've been lucky to uh, work for some pretty great head coaches. Um, you know, my first head coach was Adam Reese. He, he uh, came to Franklin as a first-year head coach. And uh, the year before that, he was in the Indiana State Championship as an offensive coordinator. And um, when I first started coaching, we were a triple option, midline toss team. Uh, and so that's kind of where my roots were for all those years. And, uh, you know, Adam moved on and uh, – Chris Call, who's at Franklin still now, he kind of took over the program, and it was a it was a culture shock because Chris came in and he's a former Franklin College graduate and uh, won a couple state championships with Tri West in Indiana, and he is an air raid spread. I was going to say not a <laughs> yeah. midline guy. No, no air raid spread them out. Uh, kind of kind of a little bit of what we do here is based in what I learned from him um, and what we did at Ballard as well. Um, you know, and so Chris taught me a lot about the offensive side and how to call a game and, and truly how to be a head coach. You know, I watched him a lot on the sidelines and his demeanor and, um, how he handled, you know, the bad moments and, you know, how not to lose his composure. And so, um, I kind of, I kind of base my head coaching role around kind of what he showed us as a head coach. And so very appreciative of those guys. And then, you know, during COVID, I, I, coached my final season up in Indiana and and my now wife my fiance at the time uh was down here and we kind of decided to make Louisville our home and so I moved down and uh luckily at the AFCA convention I ran into Adrian Morton uh in the bathroom of a TGI Fridays (laughs) in Nashville and so I was like oh are you with uh Louisville Ballard and he's like yeah and I said well uh I'm moving down to Ballard and I'm I'm a football coach like what can you do for me? Help me out. I'm trying to get in the system. And um, I kind of lucked out. I mean, a lot of guys trying to get into the JCPS system, you know, you got to start in some of the schools that aren't always the funnest schools to start at, you know. And so uh, I kind of got a, a leg in the system there. And, and he and Dr. Noose got me in at Ballard and it kind of ran from there. So I feel pretty lucky about that. But Adrian taught me a lot as well with just being able to create those relationships with the kids. That's something that I think – he's probably underestimated with he he did a great job of those kids bought in and loved him and and 
did anything they could for him. Um, and so that was one thing that I learned very quickly there. And he um, showed me, you know, lots of different ways to do that, you know. And he's he's one of those guys that he is 100 miles an hour 100% <laughs> of the time. Um, and so there was no, no uh, going half speed. There was no walking through. It was – it's go time. And so um, I kind of – was able to learn from that as well. So I appreciate all those guys. Yep, great shout out. Shout out the wife, right? Yes, absolutely. Got, My got, wife, hey, Molly. That's, that's yeah. the real support system yeah. right there. She's a, she's a JCBS teacher. She's teaching kindergarten at Co Cochran Elementary. Um, With an E or without an E? Uh, There's two of them. That's the one next to Louisville. I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and we're actually expecting our first child. So oh, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, so very exciting. Very exciting in the little household right now. And that's, you know, that's a very diverse group of coaches that you learned from. I mean, yeah, absolutely, yeah. There, there shouldn't be any offensive set you can't get in. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was that was kind of the fun part of Ballard is we had the personnel to really yeah. do whatever we wanted. And there was times that, you know, when we played Mel week two, um, my last season of Ballard, we – got into a double tight end set and just ran the ball for, and I believe if I remember right, we kept it for like 14 minutes straight in the second half and they didn't touch it. And so, um, you know, whereas sometimes we go out and throw it around like a air raid and other times yeah. we, we jump into some tight end sets and, and, and pound the rock a little bit. Well, having journeyed that helped a little well, bit. Well, that does yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, so where, where did you, where did you grow up, man? I'm from uh South side of Indianapolis. I, uh, Went to Southport High School. It's a 6A school up there in Indianapolis, um, right there on the south side in, in the townships there. And uh, born and raised and went there my whole life. Um, and then uh, graduated Southport and went into the military. I was actually in the U.S. Navy for five years from 2005 to 2010 um, and got to travel the world and see uh, lots of amazing places. And, you know, I stationed in Europe for three years and did a few deployments over to the Middle East and North Africa. Um, and then uh, spent my last two years in uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Um, so I spent two years down there. And it was, it, it, you know, it, it was very surreal as a 18, 19, 20-year-old kid, you know, going out there. And, you know, I always like to tell a story. I, I turned 19 on my plane ride to Italy. So it was, you know, I was, I was young, just trying to figure it out. Just well, th hey, thank you for your service, number one. My but pleasure. There's a big difference between North Africa and Odom County. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's, let's Absolutely, be honest, yeah. that's a, you talk about culture. I mean, that's, you can handle anything. Yeah. And, and honestly, you know, not to, not to gloat about it, but I, I tell that in interviews when I, you know, interview for teaching jobs or whatever mm. it might be is, you know, I'm not a typical teacher in the fact that I went to high school, then I went to college and then I'm back in the classroom as a teacher. You know, I went out in the world. I had a career before I became a teacher and a coach, um, you know, and even after I got out of the Navy, I didn't go right into education, you know, and so uh, it was one of those things that I have a little bit of, you know, I hate to put it that way, but more real world experience in times um, that I can help guide, you know, some of these players and, and other people in the school um, of their choices after after graduation. Yeah. No, no combat? No, you, I'm sorry. You weren't in no combat? Um, so we did a little bit. Um, I was on a a swift response team um, out of Italy. And so we did a few uh, deployments to the Middle East and things like that. Um, but we, we tried to – we pretty much avoided some of the, the bigger skirmishes. That's the Navy guys. They stay a couple miles away. Man, but this, this is <laughs> – yeah. you know what I mean? No. But, but this is a story that that, that that your community probably don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and this is why we want to do it, it is, is to – to get your community to know you, who, who you are, man, and be like, man, I like this guy. Let, let's go and support him every Friday, man. Let, let's show the support that, that you know, it, it, this, this is why, this is why I, I started the podcast. Yeah, it, I it's that it, stories yeah. right now is because we have so many diverse people in the world. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and, and you're one of them, man. <laughs> you guys have been to North Africa, for God's <laughs> sakes. I mean, yeah. I mean, how many people don't leave the state of Kentucky? Yeah. This dude's over in Africa. Just, and Italy, I mean. Yeah. This, this I mean, whole day is just like blowing me. Yeah, this this whole, crazy. this whole, it just, yeah. it, your kids are awesome, man. We may have to set up home base here, man. This is, awesome. <laughs> well, you guys are always, <laughs> uh, so, so you probably got so many memories, man, uh, of, of, of playing the game, uh, of coaching the game, but, but just tell us like one of your favorite memories. Uh, you know, 
you know, playing, I'll be honest, when I was in high school, I, I, I liked football and I played football because my friends played football, but I was a wrestler and, and that was kind of my love and passion. Um, you know, and I coached wrestling for a few years, uh, you know, while I was coaching football, I coached track as well. I mean, I'm, I'm a typical coach. I've coached everything, you know, and so it's a, it's one of those deals that, um, it's hard to pinpoint, you know, a particular, but I, I would say a couple of my favorite memories were, you know, at Franklin community, we have a rival three minutes up the road, very similar to here and us and, you know, South Oldham. Um, and, uh, Whiteland community is up there and, and they had beat Franklin for 32 games in a row. Mm. Um, it was, it was much of a rivalry. Oh man. It, it was, yeah, it used to be. And then it mm. just kind of fell off. And, um, you know, I think I'm trying to remember the exact year now, uh, it was like 2016 and we went into that game and, Next thing you know, our guys just kind of took over, and and you know, beating them for the first time was a great feeling, especially after being you know coaching there for six years. Did you storm the field? Oh yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. it was it was wild. You know, it's, <laughs> they, 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 they have they, to. They call it the Golden Boot game. It's it's kind of funny. You know, everybody has all these nice trophies for their rivalry games. The Golden Boot is literally an old work boot from like the seventies that they just spray painted gold and mounted nice. to a piece of wood. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so it, it, it's a pretty cool thing, um, you know, to have that. And I've been blessed to be part of programs that have had some firsts, um, you know. And then obviously coming down here. And going to Ballard and, you know, that first game of beating Trinity since 1992, um, that was an amazing night. And that was something that I'll always remember. Um, you know, when, when Coach Morton hired me, he said, there's three teams we have to beat. He's like, the rest of them, they'll take care of themselves. But the was three, Eastern one of them? Eastern was not one of them at the time. Um, That's their rivalry. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and props to Eastern. I mean, they, they – they always gave us a good battle. It was never a walk around, but the three games at Ballard that, that Adrian told me when I took the job was male, manual, and Trinity. And if we beat those three, then the sky's the limit for us. And so, you know, that, that, uh, my second year at Ballard, you know, we get in there and, um, beat Mel in week two in just a weird fluky game. You know, it took a, a field goal back for a touchdown and we didn't even score offensively, but we controlled possession offensively. It was, it was just a weird game and we won that game. And then going into, you know, the manual game and the manual game was a tough one. I think we lost 14, nothing that night. I mean, it was, it was a hard one for us. And then to turn around two weeks later after the bye week and, and get that win against Trinity, it was like such a roller coaster that year, you know, and then to turn around and, uh, go all the way to the semi-state and then lose to Mel the way we did. It was it was wild. It was it was a roller coaster of a year, and it was. Uh, so that was what 21? 22. 20, 20, 22. Okay. 2022, Yeah. Okay. Right after COVID, two years after COVID. Yeah. Okay. Two yeah. years. Now, now I, I asked this question to a lot of the head coaches, and and it, they just kind of laugh. Coach laughs, you know. Because he never had any hobbies outside the game of football when he was sure. in it. You know, do you have any hobbies? You know, it's kind of funny. I try to. Uh, <laughs> no. But really, it's 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 more so to try to pull my mind or clear my mind with stuff. And so I love cooking. I'm, I'm the chef in the house, and I do 99% of the cooking. Um, and, you know... Before I moved down here, I haven't been able to set it back up because it's, you know, it's been busy. But uh, I, I like to, when I, during COVID, I got into woodworking. And I had like a, a wood shop set up in my garage. Um, and I make cornhole boards and stuff like that and sell them off, you know, and things like that. But uh, that was really more so just to occupy my time and during COVID <laughs> when yeah. I wasn't allowed at the so school all, and stuff. So all that's getting ready to change oh, in yeah. about, about eight months. What did you say? How, how far along is she? Well, the, 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 the crazy part, she's due August 17th. And so, oh. yeah, it's going to be a crazy start to the season there. She's, she's got to have it on Saturday. Oh, yeah, I know. Trust me. Or Sunday. At that's, the worst that's case the, scenario. That's the second scrimmage week. So yeah. hopefully she doesn't, you know, go into week one there. So we'll see. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. So, so like, you know, the reason why I asked about hobbies is, you know, I mean, as a head coach, as a coach in general, you know what I mean? You take things personal. You try to get away from the game, you know what I mean, and not have to deal with the stress. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you deal with the stress? And Do you go into a woodwork shop and just relax, or or what's something that you would do just to just to get away from the game? Yeah, I mean, a lot, that, that's kind of where the cooking's taken part of now. Um, you know, I, it's even though it's a late night, you know, sometimes I enjoy going home and just focusing on that task and not, dreading or fretting or whatever you know about what's to come you know but i'll be honest 
you know, and it might be a little cliche, but it's true. Like my wife is amazing and she does so much to allow me to do this, you know, do what I love. And, you know, she sacrifices time with me and she, you know, she, she keeps our house together during the season, you know, and I, I put in that extra time during the off season where I'm, you know, trying to earn those brownie points, but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, she, she does a great job. And, and there's times I'll go home after a, a tough game. I'll be like, honey, I don't know if I know what I'm doing, you know, but she's right there and she, she's there to help me and kind of guide me through. And that's, that's kind of what our relationship is. You know, I do the same for her at times. See, that's opposite. I used to come home and my wife would say, honey, I don't think you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She does a great job with that. I've, I've, Every once in a while, she'll be like, um, what were you doing on third down? I'm like, well, I don't know. Yeah. I used to sit in a booth, and my wife would sit right in front of me. <laughs> and she would literally, sometimes she we would give up a long touchdown. She would turn around and go, I'm right. like, I didn't do it on purpose. My yeah. wife, my wife, when they come home, and she already knew I was mad because she yeah. checked the score, she would just, like, let me in the door, and then she'd just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'll give you a minute. Right. You know? <laughs> uh, my wife, hey. she, she gets uh, – you know, last year we were pretty run heavy, and so she she would see me after game. She's like, "You need to throw the ball more. You need to throw the ball more." She least, she loves well, throwing once, the ball. So I'm like, "Well, yeah, we'll see." Yeah. So there you go, man. You got to shout out the wives, man. <laughs> they're they're the ones that that really held everything together, man. So that's what's up. Um, let's let's get into like you know what was the main reason you got into like coaching? Yeah, you know, when I got out of the military, I. I, I took, you know, some, some just regular, you know, jobs, um, while I was trying to decide uh, what degree I wanted to get and kind of go to college and all that. And so like, I was working at Sears as like a loss prevention guy. I was working, you know, I worked as like private security at Rolls Royce, you know, and stuff like that in Indianapolis. And, um, you know, when I was working at Rolls Royce, I was like, man, I, I get off at two thirty. I got a lot of time left in my day. I want to do something, you know? And so I, uh, <laughs> You know, now all that's out the window. Well, <laughs> you know, I probably uh, – Everybody goes. <laughs> right. And I go, you know, I want to do something. So probably not knowing what I was getting myself into, I applied – it's funny. I applied to be a head wrestling coach with zero experience. Um, and I applied to just be an assistant football coach at Franklin. And, and you know, I did not get a call for the head wrestling coach job. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Adam Adam came into Franklin, and, and he was trying to build a staff, and he gave me a shot. And – you know, I walked in the interview and he was asking me some questions. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. You know, and so uh, I kind of had to dive in and, and learn some some more technical side of football. You know, as a player, you don't always get that point. You know, you don't always understand it. You just know what I'm supposed to do. But as a as a coach, it, I had to learn and I had to learn quickly. And um, it was it was a pretty, pretty exciting time. So but that that's kind of how I got into it. It was just I had some extra time and I wanted to do something worth my time. Let's go. Sometimes as a coach, trial by fire is the best way to oh, figure, yeah. to figure it out. You don't want somebody to tell you all the answers. Well that, that was good story on that. My so Adam, we're in the summer, it was beginning of August and we're getting ready for the week one up there and he walks up to me on we had our J V games on Saturday at the time. And so he walks up to me on Wednesday and he goes, Hey, can you uh, call the JV offense this week? And I'm like, I, I guess I have no idea. I'm who like, me? I'll figure it out. I'm like, And so he sends me and, and who turned out to be one of my best friends, uh, Kyle. And we, uh, we get on the bus and we go all the way out to Western Indiana and get off that, that bus at Northview, not knowing what the heck either of us are doing. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and so we figured it out and we actually won the game. And I was, that's when I fell in love with calling offense too. Like, it was like, Oh, this was amazing. <laughs> so. Got the, Something about calling the plays and yeah. seeing them work. It's, it's a, it's a high. Yeah. So let, let's just get into this, this team though, this year, man. Uh, we were just out there watching them getting, getting crazy, pushing weight around, man. Uh, uh, who are you looking to take that leadership role this year? Yeah. I mean, we, Took over a program um, that had a lot of uh, guy, young guys in it that have some leadership qualities. And so, you know, those guys now are starting to become, you know, seniors next year and juniors next year that they now have the reins. You know, they don't have those big brother types in front of them to kind of hold them back. And, you know, Miller Brown, who you guys talk to, you know, he's one of our main leaders, you know, and he, he's not always the most vocal leader. He's, he's the I'm going to show you how to play leader. Um, you know, and having him, I mean, he's a state champion wrestler. 
Um, and so having him on the team, he knows how to be a champion. He knows how to win is a big deal for especially our young guys to kind of see his practice mentality and his attitude. Um, you know, and then a lot of our guys last year that played were sophomores. Um, you know, we had a few seniors that played, you know, a lot of minutes, but and a handful of juniors, but a ton of our guys. I mean, we were, at some games we were starting 15, 16 sophomores at times. And so, you know, as all of us that have coached know, like, that's a recipe for some losses, but they got some really valuable minutes against some really great competition. Um, they kind of learned what not to do, you know, and so, uh, you when know, they got the taste in their mouth too. Yeah, that's yeah, the you most know, important thing. Our quarterback Derek uh, Dees, he he learned quickly last year, you know, and he he had to kind of step into a role that maybe he wasn't ready for right away, and uh, and he owned it. And you know, when I kind of knew it was about, you know, when I knew he was the guy was when he stepped in the game and that huddle just straightened up. He took control right away. None of the seniors back talked him. They just, I mean, he just instantly had that appeal to him and so um it was it was uh he did a heck of a job too you know but as a sophomore he he made some mistakes and and so uh you know but he he was always very he took a lot of ownership for him and uh me and him would always sit down and watch film and and kind of go over those and he's i'm excited for him to have a great season this year I love it. I love it. Now, now talk about – I love this segment because it's like the good, bad, the ugly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of, of your season. Yeah, so, you know, going into to last year, didn't really know what, was, what, we, what we had really. You right. Know, I, coming into any program, brand new, um, didn't know, you know, who was who, uh, trying to get guys in the right positions. That was tough, you know, especially with a pretty much whole new coaching staff. Um, and so we – we spent a lot of time just kind of plugging and playing, trying to find guys in the right spots, and we still weren't perfect at all last year uh, with getting guys in the in the correct positions. But uh, you know, as we you know got into the beginning of the season, we had some success in our you know early scrimmages, and you know our second scrimmage, we got to scrimmage Owensboro Catholic, um, who is pretty dang mm. good, you know, and so uh, we were able to you know, kind of learn a little bit about ourselves that night and, and figure out, you know, where some of our holes are. And, you know, especially, you know, Brady, their quarterback up there, slings that ball. And so <laughs> it kind of opened our eyes to, on, in the secondary a little bit. Um, and so, you know, going into week one, you know, we were playing Lafayette. And the first uh, five minutes of that game were like, oh, Lord, what did I get myself into? I mean, we started out the game offensively throwing a pick six. And then the very next series, fumbling the ball on the first down. And so uh, it was a scary, like, first few minutes of that game. Like, oh, this is going to go bad. And with the team being as fragile as it was after an 0-11 season, you know, that was, my, that was my worst fear at the time was, you know, if we don't find success early in the season, the season's going to spiral. Um, and so luckily – the kids were determined and they pushed through and we were able to come out with the win in week one. And that kind of just gave them a huge boost of uh, confidence and drive, you know. And so, uh, you know, moving on to week two and winning against Shelby County the way we did on a block PAT uh, kind of also gave them that burst, you know. And so those were the really goods. Um, it, it was kind of fun seeing them win a tight game and, and, and kind of have that drive and determination, you know. And then I think – Part of what happened was, you know, we started to, to smell ourselves a little bit, you know, started to <laughs> started to feel good about ourselves a little too much. Maybe too didn't practice bit. as well as we should have or, you know, some of those things. And, and we kind of go on to a little slump and it kind of starts to spiral. We get some guys injured and it was, you know, that midseason point, um, you know, we're, we're sitting in the coach's office and we're like, who are we going to play? You know, we went into the South Oldham game and, uh, you know, we had six defensive starters standing on the sidelines, and it's like, okay, and that's not great against South Oldham. No, that's you not know? good. That's not and good so, against anybody. Yeah, and no. so you know, for us, it was plug and play. Who's up next? And and trying to just instill that mentality in them, and I think that's going to help us into this year as well. Um, you know, and then pulling out the win in district against Eastern, um, just to get that district success was another huge goal I had going into last year because I didn't really know where we were going to be at all, all together. But, you know, my goals were find some early success, find some success in district, and then let the chips fall where they may. And, and we did that. And so, um, you know, we, we, you know, got the Eastern win and then, you know, Ballard and Trinity are their own beasts. And so, you know, that's 
now been our focus is how do we uh, close that gap to Ballard and Trinity and in, in district and you know get our name out there uh, with the best. There's that hashtag again. Yeah. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Close the gap. Close the gap, man. Yep. Uh, um, so with with you, you know, just starting spring ball, you know, when you and your coaching staff put together like like a goal sheet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What what are some of the goals that you you'd like to see this just this team uh, achieve? Yeah. So you know, having being year two it's it's a little bit easier to go in because the terminology is now program wide that's huge um you know we all speak the same language for the most part you know and there's still stuff we got to get better at with that but um you know this year it's it's about we we sat down last november when we lost to x and we turned around and said okay where were our deficiencies this year? And we did a full program evaluation just like most people do um you know and we we said like strength technique agility those three were probably our three big ones and then some resiliency and toughness was some issues for us um and that that the strength you know i feel like we've been attacking i mean we do 7 a.m three days a week in here you know 50 60 guys at times just getting after it and 7 a.m is hard for a high schooler you know like me i'm fine i'm i love it it's my time yeah. <laughs> when i was in high school i would not have loved yeah. it um but uh you know and so the technique part is something going into spring ball that we've really been focusing on. And it's, you know, running our routes perfectly. You know, we're not always going to be the most athletic team on the field, but we can make up that gap when we are overly disciplined and we, we run our routes perfect every time. And that creates the timing better. And, you know, we're, we're, gap disciplined on defense to where we're not going to freelance you know I talked to the guys even today before I was like freelancing gets you beat you know so trust what the program's saying trust what it's doing and you know if you are in charge of C gap or you're in charge of A gap then you better dang well be in A gap and you know if you're freelancing on it it's, it's going to get us beat and so kind of reinstilling some of those values in spring ball and going into the summer is going to be a big deal for us and you know uh, continuing to improve our tackling technique and Little little things like that, you know, just, uh, you know, we, we bought a jugs last year, and so being able to catch on the jugs and get a ton of extra reps catching and doing those things is a big deal for us. Yeah, do you got anything for Coach? Yeah, I mean, yeah, my, my philosophy was always everybody do your job. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the guy next to you. Do your job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look up and there's two guys in the A-gap, somebody's wrong. Right. So if everybody does their job, everything works out just fine. I mean, it's it's hard to get these young guys to – that were studs in little league to just do whatever they wanted and mm -hmm. it worked out. But, and talk about working hard, getting stronger. What I saw out there, <laughs> you ain't got to worry about being stronger this year. <laughs> I mean, those guys, yeah. everybody out there, there wasn't any slacking. Everybody was getting it. Yeah, no, even the little guys, even man, the little bit of guy. Mean, I looked little... over and dude had more weight on there than I thought was even possible yeah 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 because coach and coach invited us in and mm -hmm. to watch uh the, his lift a thon here um wow phenomenal yeah. phenomenal group man well thank you yeah. I, it's Your always strength a great coach is he's a dude oh he's doing great yeah I'll give him a shout out in just a second but it's always a great thing when you have to go to your ad and ask for more weight because we've ran out <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that's that, that is a huge positive going on yeah and and let's talk about your staff a little yeah. bit man uh, so, yeah, so since we brought up strength coach, uh, you know, our strength coach is Jared Grants. He, uh, he's a Oldham County, Oldham County High School uh, graduate, and uh, he was teaching here as a PE teacher, but uh, he's since moved on to a uh, uh, being the manager of a local gym here um, in town. And so he's kind of chasing his dreams as a, as a fitness, you know, yeah. uh, that kind of stuff. And, um, but he's, he's still staying with us, and he's, he's running our weight room, and his programming has been tremendous. He went to U of L and uh, kind of got a lot of learning from them when he was there. That's where he graduated from. And so um, he was part of their weightlifting programs while he was there. And so it kind of brought that mentality here. And, you know, since he's taken over, it's obviously, I mean, you guys saw it out there. The results are going to speak for themselves, um, you know. And so we've done a lot of work this off season, kind of building the staff to be a lot more independent-based um, and so, you know, I, one of my main goals this off season was to get uh, a fully separate freshman staff, and we've accomplished that. We got four freshman coaches going into this year that'll be able to kind of take that freshman team. Um, you know, they'll still get their indie time with us. They'll still, you know, kind of with the varsity coaches. But when it comes group time, team time, it's time to separate. You know, instead of them just standing around 
looking at the geese flying overhead. We're going to get them over there working and doing some stuff. And so, awesome. Yeah, that's been a big, big, uh, big push for us. But, you know, my defensive coordinator, um, Matt Brown, he's the former head coach out here. He coached at Atherton. He was the head coach at Atherton for a little while as well. Um, but he had a lot of success out here when he was the head coach. And um, that's Miller's dad. And so, actually, I was like, dude, instead of sitting in the stands, you know football, come come coach with me. Yep. So, um, he's done a heck of a job of uh, kind of bringing back some of that old school mentality. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I watch you guys, you know, podcast and stream and stuff on YouTube. And the Mike Jackson one was awesome. And I really enjoyed that one because uh, Mike's been a great inspiration to me. You know, Mike was the head coach out here for a long time. He coached Matt Brown. And, you know, who became the head coach out here. And so there's a lot of uh, talent and co- you know players and talent and coaches that have come through this place. You know, uh, Coach McKee was out here with yep. Coach Jackson. And so um, those guys all kind of learned from each other. And Coach Brown's kind of that Mike Jackson old school mentality <laughs> guy. And so sometimes I got to say, whoa, instead of, you know, like, yeah, hey, exactly. whoa, calm down. <laughs> um, but uh, and so kind of bringing some of those guys that, that had the success here in the 80s and 90s and um, even early 2000s, like uh, John Scarborough, who uh, went and played at U L after graduating here. He's back as our D-line coach, um, you know, and, and just bringing OC guys back has been a huge part of uh, building the staff, in my opinion. And so um, trying to find the ghosts of uh, Christmas past there with uh, Coach Jackson and Coach McKee's uh, teams because, man, they were freaking good out here. So really good. Still are. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, we see we seen the little the little bell out there, man. Mm-hmm. When they get a PR, you're going to go smack that bell, man. We heard it what six or eight times. Six or eight at, yeah. at least. Um, what traditions are you bringing? And and then what are you, you know? I mean that are you are you staying with the same traditions they have here, or or did you bring any more? Well, you know, we. We kind of sat down when I took over. I sat down with the seniors, you know, last year's senior class, and and discussed some things that maybe they've been doing over the last few years. Um, and then, you know, I reached out to some of the the former coaches and the former players, and you know, I talked to to Coach Jackson and and you know people like that, and Coach Brown, who who was here during those times, and you know, we brought back uh, the creed, um, you know, and and that was a big deal. I think I think it was Coach Jackson that that. You know, him and his teams created the creed, and um, we uh, we updated it a little bit. Like, the words are still the same, but we got new signage for it, you know, kind of modernized some of the the motif, if you will. I don't right, know right, the right, right word is there. But, um, you know, so brought back the creed a little bit. You know, you talked about the bell. You know, one of the things that is, is exciting around here is, you know, at our home games, when we win, we ring the bell, and there's a, the bell that goes out there on the field. Um, and, uh, you know, it's Belfield at Chris Lander Stadium. Mm-hmm. And so Belfield is actually named after the first head coach at Oldham County, Coach Bell. Um, and so um, it's kind of something that got brought into the weight room with this with this bell. And so it's, you know, every time they get a PR in the weight room, we go ring the bell. And, you know, hopefully that spills over to the field. Every time we get that win, we go ring the bell. And so um, just kind of bringing those traditions back and being very deliberate on how we get the kids to buy into them. Phenomenal episode, coach. Yeah, oh. Phenomenal, phenomenal, man. Yeah. And this is why we do it, man. It get get to tell the coaches stories, man. Let the community it. know who these guys are, man. Yeah. They put so much dedication, so much work into this. Uh, I enjoyed this because we've talked on Twitter and texted back and forth. We've never actually met. I mean, I think we worked a couple camps or something together, but we never actually met. And it was good to talk. To, it's good to talk to see new younger guys coming up and and trying to improve the game. And it, it, it's always refreshing to see a guy like him that, that knows what he's doing and hopefully can turn this around and, and get these guys rolling in the right direction. I think I think what we saw in the weight room is a great step in the right direction. Well, I appreciate that. It's 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 been a it's been a haul, you know, yeah. over the last year or so. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have some really great assistant coaches on staff and uh, amazing leadership in the building. Um, you know, it's Dr. Brown – our principal has been tremendous and she wants nothing but success out here. And so, um, it does help that her, her dad is, uh, coach, uh, Redmond. So, 
Um, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I, so, if she ever wants some story, tell yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, it's she 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 understands football. She understands what it takes to win, and and I yeah. appreciate her uh, giving me this opportunity. Just remember, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. Absolutely, it takes time. Listen, I I, I want to yeah. shout out one of, one of the uh, seniors that that signed with Moorhead uh, State. Man, uh, who is this? Yeah, so we, we actually had three signees this year. Uh, at Moorhead, we got Zach Holman, our tight end from last year going. Um, played a little D-line for us, too, but he, he mainly played tight end for us, and he uh, he was a tremendous asset for us. He's a great, great kid, great leader. I hope nothing but the best for him as he gets over to – He's uh, a great ambassador to your program. He absolutely is, and, you know, he's one of the first kids I met. You know, even in my interview, he was one of the first kids there and, and you know, shaking my hand and – you know, asking me questions like, you know, and so it was, it was pretty cool. So, the, and, and I just want to shout him out, man, real quick. Uh, uh, he, he, he DM me on Twitter mm-hmm. and was like, Hey, you need to get over to OC. I was like, yeah, we're going to be there in a week. He's like, man, I was like, well, do you want to get on and talk a little bit about you? You know, your time here and all? he's like, no, I don't want to take nothing away from those guys that are working in the weight room right now. Yeah. He said, all eyes on them. That's, that's right. That's, that, that's, that means a lot. That's, coming from your guys, yeah. I mean, that, that means a lot. That's and, and we, hey, we've, we're coming. Just because we haven't been there yet, we're coming. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't panic. We're coming. <laughs> There's only two of us. There's only so much of us to go around, but we're coming. <laughs> yes, man. But like I said, this was a, a phenomenal episode, and 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 this is what it's about, man. Yeah. Everyone having a story. We're here for them to tell it, and like we always say, everyone has a story. We're here for them to tell it. <laughs> Cleats Again. to whistle podcast. Nice.